First of all, let me say to the people that I am Gabriel. Thank you. Because they will not know who is speaking and may question the authority behind the answers. Thank you. But yes, the Christian story is one that is very unique to each world, but yet not unique to this, the individuals that are playing the part. You see, in each realm, in each species, the story plays out slightly differently. The beliefs, uh, the cultures at the times uh, that Jesus visits different species and different planets are slightly different than the one that he entered when he came to your planet. Let me explain something. It is calculated by God when a change is needed on the planet for belief systems, for building up thought processes about God and about what God can do, what faith is, what love is. All these different things have their best time for introduction. Now, as you know, on your planet, it was a long time that the Jewish uh, population was there, and it was getting a little dry. It was getting to be forgotten, and society was starting to overrun many things. And God was not being considered as much as hedonism and other gods that were not real gods, but were actually just people standing up and wanting recognition as a, a special person. But they would call themselves a goddess or a priestess or whatever it is, so that they may have some attention. But God saw that it was necessary at that particular time, in that particular culture, that it was ripe for change. And so that is why Jesus came when he did to that particular time period. Now, let's go somewhere else in the universe. There are other planets that can tell a very similar story about, but it, the names are changed. They are not the same. He did not go by the name Jesus or on other planets. He was not called the Christ on other planets, which was the anointed one. He was not called a king on other planets, but their different cultures needed different explanations for who he was. But very similar uh, things happened with him as he was sent to those planets to make great changes in their spiritual atmospheres. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Now, on some planets, he did not have to die for the change to be great. He had to do miraculous things, and he had to be a certain way. But in some places, in some planets, death would have not been the right answer, or death would have not been uh, what he had to go through and resurrection for them to, to believe. It, would, it was a different situation but it was still there was still some sort of torture there was still some sort of negativity that happened to him in every place that he went so that he could show that God could overcome it and in all these places it was a great negativity that he overcame now you are right there were others that went with him in this quest. The Mary Magdalene's, the uh, Judas, the, but they were not called the same, of course. But, they, but interestingly enough, when they came to the earth, um, 
the earth scenario of what was to be done, things changed a little bit. It was a more harsh reality there. It was a more, he had to make a bigger um, proclamation in many ways. His death was spectacular. His resurrection was spectacular. But also, his relationship with the planet was also spectacular. He did a lot of healing. He did a lot of, of uh, forgiving. But you don't understand one thing. During the period between when he was young and, and came into his adolescent period, he learned as much as he could about sin and what it was as he could because in order for God to forgive sin, God had to understand it. And in order to understand it, he had to look at it and even experience it to some extent. He had to become part of many things, but in a way that only was a learning situation, not that he would be continually doing these things, but he had to understand them and the people. He spent much of his time with the sinners. I, I don't know if you read the Bible, but it said before he started his mission, he spent much time with the sinners and prostitutes and things of this nature, just finding out what was going on with them, why they did what they did, and the reasonings behind all of these things he had to know. Because in order to forgive them and love them unconditionally and let God know what was going on with them, he had to understand them. And then, can, but, can, can I inter intervene at the moment? Um, uh, as, as we are on the topic of the scene, Sin. Um, I'm looking at Jewish culture and Christian culture, and in Jewish culture, the sin is always in outward, external actions. You can think whatever you like; it's what you do that matters. Correct. And in Christianity, it is what you think that matters. You can do, can be exceptionally pious uh, outwardly, but if you sin in your mind, that's that's a sin. And if you there, look at that uh, is a different, yes, there is that distinguishing because um, they wanted the, the people to be more pure in their in all ways, not just in their actions, but in their thoughts as well. But it has changed a little bit as time has gone on, because God has accepted all of His people for who they are, and He loves them all, and it does not matter what it does not matter if they think bad thoughts or whatever it does matter how what it, you, what they do to spread love understanding compassion goodness these are the things that he is looking for if it's true that you are a loving person then you will think loving thoughts if you if it is true that you are not a loving person you will not be doing all these good things. You will not care about them. So it is that the inside does express the outside. Uh, and in some other cultures, there is uh, no no uh, understand no no sin whatsoever, and uh, yeah, the sin is a minor a, a minor really. issue. So my question is, how much of that is? Uh, it pertained to Christianity, and how much of that is something extraneous to Christianity? Good question, because really there is, God doesn't really look for sin, and it, there really isn't any sin except what you feel that you have done wrong intentionally. If you do something intentionally wrong, that would be a sin. Now, if you dance or sing 
or do something that other people say are a sin and you do not feel it's a sin, it's not. Only the things that you know in your heart are wrong that you do are a sin. There are things that you must do as an individual, must be as an individual, that some people may say is not right. But you must be that way because God made you that way, and so therefore it's not a sin. So I uh, wonder if um, Lucifer has a role in this and uh, if it is only for on earth that sin became so much of an issue maybe on other planets lucifer wasn't there and the sin wasn't there it's different on every planet but yes lucifer is someone that is only doing what he is needs to do to show mankind that negativity can be overcome that negativity is not something you want to live by, that negativity, uh, when overcome, can be... Uh, you see, without the negative, the positive, it can be taken for granted. Without the negative, the positivity can be taken for granted. So without sorrow, how do you know joy is so happy? How do you feel joy? if there's no such thing as sorrow. So the opposites must, must be there so that you can experience the true joy, happiness, love, and positivity of God. Now there are those that will join Satan in his uh, quest to bring as much negativity about as possible. But it is not like the stories are written that he is going to be eternally damned or he's already been forgiven. God has already forgiven him. And so that is what will eventually happen. So how different is Earth in terms of... Um the Christianity compared to other planets? Well, other planets, they do the, they have their um, version of what you call Christianity, but it's not called that, of course. Their version of spirituality, their version of religion, and also it is tampered with by their people, just as it is tampered with by your people and changed and made impure. But the thing is about spirituality and religion is that it does introduce them to God, at least gives them a glimpse of who God is. They may not understand completely his fullness and his greatness and his wonderfulness, but they do see a glimpse of it through these religions and spiritualities. Does that make sense? Uh, let, let me uh, clarify the question. So uh, I see from my research and from looking around and questioning, looks like the uh, history of the world have been, has been, um, there was a bleeding, bleeding through of many histories onto each other. So the history of Earth is so much linked to the history of Pleiades, of Orion, of Andromeda. So there is like a, the drama is played over, and, and Atlantis, the drama is played over and over, and there is so much um, bleed, bleeding through. Or, yes, okay. Let me give you an example of what you're saying. The right. Egyptian culture and the religion there, so much different than Christianity, yet it was from another planet, and it was their way of looking at spirituality, Ra and the sun gods and different things of that nature. The Atlanteans, they brought their own form of religion with priests and priestesses 
the crystals and all these different things that were part of their religion. Um, the Greeks with the, the Greek gods, they had their, uh, those were aliens that brought their idea of, their view of God to earth. However, they brought a very, uh, once they got there, they acted like gods themselves and displeased him. But they did show some of their um, religious beliefs to the earth people. All these different things, you are correct. They have brought these different things to the earth and have uh, shown some of the humans a little bit of their religion from different places. So um, one idea is that, that leakage or connection, connect, connectivity between different dramas of religion. And the second idea was um, that, um, I lost it, just a sec, that um, the transformation, oh yeah, the, uh, the, the spilling of the Christianity beyond the Christian world. And on earth, uh, the Western civilization spilled way outside of Christianity, like say, Western influence on Muslims or Western influence on China or Western influence on India and all the other cultures which have very different religion, but I think Christianity made this Western culture. So it looks like uh, uh, it was the, the Christian story was filtered out, but the, the Western uh, mindset is peeled and mm, infected the whole planet. Yes, but listen, are those other religions really that much different? They have a one, most of them have a one God belief system, and they have very similar beliefs as far as goodness, kindness, uh, love, and, and these things uh, have to offer. These <laughs> other religions are not so far removed from Christianity, except for that Christianity was so um, different in its resurrection portion. Mm -hmm. The resurrection changed how people felt about their religion and how it was viewed by many was different than some of these other religions with the one God for uh, central belief systems. But still, the one God central belief systems are valid and very similar in many ways. The Western culture was developed from Christianity, but also from the very fact that they did not follow properly all the rules and they and mankind changed much of the um of what is right and wrong uh so the people could act in a very dominant way right dominance yes so that's the main topic um so looking at the human culture before Jesus and uh, Jesus Yeshua and after Jesus Yeshua it's a transformation from individual kingdoms and small empires into the global empire eventually that would happen anyway right but it happened a little differently with Christianity yes but it does happen on all worlds that it comes from small to great. Right. I my 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 quest started from McKenna's revelation. Terence McKenna said that there is a timeline. Um, he, he was given a message that there was a, there was a timeline um, where Christianity didn't happen or didn't become dominant, and uh, just Greek religion connected to all others, including Mayan, and the Earth progressed much faster in, into a unified planet. And uh, so my question is, uh, 
So what did Christianity give us? You mean, well, why did it hold you back so much? Yes, was it uh, only... It held you back so much because there was so much guilt from that first era that they, they introduced... Uh, incredible guilt to the people, and guilt holds things back. Fear and guilt were introduced, whereas in the Hellenistic kind of culture, fear and guilt were not part of it, and they could move forward much quicker. Right. So did Christianity do the same thing on other planets? Yes. It was not called Christianity, but it did cause fear and guilt in some other places. Now. The thing about that is God wants everyone to realize what is true and what is not true and to overcome the fear and the guilt. He speaks about that many times, but it, it seems like fear is something that people hold on to as something that is good. They feel that if they hold on to their fear, they will not do anything wrong or they'll be less likely to do anything wrong if they're afraid to do things. Now, this is not true, because if you look at how God really is, he's a loving, accepting, beautiful being. He doesn't want you to cling to your fear and your guilt. He wants you to be exactly who you are supposed to be and to move forward in a very positive uh, way, in a very courageous way, and if you do not do that, many, many times you do not finish your, um, your, your quest. You do not finish your, your mission. I'm looking at, uh, at the Gospels. Uh, Yeshua doesn't seem to be uh, uh, so much focused on fear and guilt. It looks like it was a later, a later addition to, to the Christian no. Yeshua was, was not focused on fear and guilt at all. Mankind is what put that in there. Was it Lucifer? Well, Lucifer could have helped, yes. But it was mankind manipulating his people, manipulating the people that put the fear and guilt in. You see, for there were periods of time when only one or two people in the city could read. And when they read the Bible... They read it the way they interpreted it. And many times the priests would cause them to feel fear and anxiety by adding some of these uh, extra little stories so that they could manipulate them, control the people, so that they could have control of their funds, they could have control of their actions, and... And because they were afraid to let the people be themselves, because they themselves could not be themselves, they put these restrictions on them. God did not do that. There are stories of uh, extraterrestrials with elongated skulls um, being in Vatican, and, and that corresponds to the idea that they wear long hats still. still. Um, um, is it something like from Orion? Was it? Uh, yes, there are those that have. There you have. There are, is evidence of those beings on your planet, and mm. some so, of those were in religious cultures, but they were more pure. Uh, I just one, and also in Egypt, also elongated skulls. I, I just wonder if that idea of control through money system, uh, guilt, and, uh, and fear, if it was imported. If what was imperfect? Imported, imported, brought, brought from outside oh, of yes. the planet. Some of it was. And it is, like I said, there for manipulation and control purposes. If you want to manipulate and control someone, you, they be, you make them afraid of you. You make them uh, under your control, and then you can do whatever you want. So guilt and fear and sin are maybe not Christian ideas. Not necessarily. 
I think Khufu was pretty, I like Khufu, but I think he was a pretty strict ruler. And um, it's, it's only now in the West uh, there is an idea that people should participate in democracy and stuff like that. So it's still an yeah. illusion, but... He, Khufu it, was very strict. And he had a reason for that because he had a very violent society to deal with. So he brought a great amount of strictness to them because they were out of control. Um, so that is why he was so strict. But uh, it, was, it was out of necessity. Yeah. Uh, studying Egyptian history, I, it was it's funny. They had like four kingdoms and breaks between the kingdoms. Like for, for 100 years, there was no no civilization there but uh, and they had uh, sculpture art and uh, writing and actually even literature but uh, they could only write standardized approved government religiously approved text there was no creativity the sculptor wasn't allowed to make anything uh, except what was previously approved so it that was is control correct that was uh, an extreme level of uh, control yes standardization yes so um so kufa was uh was a uh, an avian uh, yeah so is it uh so where from do, does it all come is it a uh, universal is it the how the, uh, does every culture have to go through building of um of uh, empire no not necessarily there are some planets and species that have had very little outside contact with other species as they were evolving. Your planet has had great amounts of outside contact and great amounts of interference from outside beings, and therefore it makes it a very different place and a very unusual place. But there are many species that were only visited by one or two, and a different species because of the remote area of space in which they were developed or uh, there were others that had no contact from outside because the those that were around uh, did not believe in contacting or becoming part of societies that were developing so your planet is sort of an exception to the rule because it has so many interferences. Um, I'm coming back to the idea. Blavatsky um, uh, was very emotional about uh, rejecting Christianity. She, I mean, she did like any religions, any dominance, but Christianity especially. And uh, she was writing still about the development of human root races. I keep forgetting, are we the fifth race or sixth race? But um, the idea was that every race was developing a certain chakra. Like uh, the initial races were developing, say, the root chakra, so we could ground in materi material earth. And it looks like from that perspective, the modern race is developing the willpower. And the willpower is best developed in the ideas of dominance, uh, war, fight, um, the solar slavery, and so on. Say again? The solar plexus. Yeah, right. And, uh, and now we're transforming from solar plexus to, uh, to the heart. And Correct. actually, Jesus, 2,000 two years ago, was trying to do just that, to move Correct. us from dominance to, to empathy. Correct. And uh, why did it take so long? That is a question to ask God because I do not know the answer to that. The re but I do know the, that he did want people to experience evolution the way that it is now. But your, the interaction with so many different other species has interfered with that process. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I think that is the answer is there's been too much interference. But do you agree that with that idea of uh yes. some thousand years ago uh was spent by us just to develop the willpower? 
Well, I believe that mankind, as they evolved, so uh, developed from uh, the root chakra to the sacral to the solar plexus. They, as evolution moves forward, they develop different things and understand different things. Understanding is part of how you live. And with only a basic understanding, you live in a very basic way. With an evolved understanding of life, you live in a, a more evolved way. So it has to come, come to you naturally. So as mankind was created and moved forward, he was a basic, a basic creature and then moved into greater realms of understanding. Right. And the story goes that Atlantis was um, distant. What well, was a different species, actually. And it, yes, was, it was distant. A completely different species. And that's why, really, I think God, it was God that really decided that they had to go. Right. And uh, Blavatsky says that they were developing the sacral chakra, the second one, and that's why they did so much in sexuality. And when they tried to go into the third chakra, willpower, that's where they failed because uh, it wasn't their, their species wasn't designed for that. It's humans who were to develop the third chakra. Correct. Is it? Oh, thanks. That is correct in uh -huh. some ways. There's uh -huh. much more to it than that, of course. But uh -huh. our time is up and I can't go into it. All right. Um, I, I invite the closing blessing or statement. Oh, uh, yes, I would love to do that. Zion Zuvore Karayanda Tafa Sensu Adonai, Ian Gayoku, Ali and Gayuan Diasan Sambanchiata. Mohori kada in si kenote for shunza varienta. Kasia shamvoti pacham javia si la manuna asasundi kasha shunze variatandi rahanza kasha shas andu turi kitia matu. Matum self yendu revashin zato kokarash asim vyatin tata. Much love to you. Much love. Thank you much. Hello? Hey, Jim, welcome back. Hi, how are you? It was fun. 